Don't you just hate it when you're browsing the internet and then all of a sudden clickbait ads just pop up out of nowhere? Well, what you need is the pie hole. What the pie hole does is it blocks ads at the DNS level. And if you're not familiar with what DNS is, here's a quick overview. Basically, computers don't talk to each other in terms of google.com. They use IP addresses. If we pretended computers could talk, this is how a conversation of looking up a website would go. Where is google.com? Google.com is located at 216.58.194.78. Hey friend, what's up? Hi. Now that you have a PhD in how the internet works, we can introduce the pie hole and show how it would block ads at the DNS level. Where is Google.com? Google.com is located at 216.58.194.78. Hey friend, give me that sweet web page goodness. This web page contains content from cringyads.biz. You will need to look them up and get more stuff from there in order to complete the web page. Where is cringyads.biz? The reason that Pihole does nothing here is because it already knows that cringyads.biz is full of cringy ads, so it does nothing, meaning it does not ask the DNS server where that website is. Hey DNS server, where is cringyads.biz? New number, who this? So in the real world, that translates to whenever there's an overlay ad on a YouTube video, it doesn't load. When you go to the YouTube homepage, the banner ad doesn't load. One potential downside is that if you're looking for some parts for a project, if you click on one of the sponsored results up at the top, it's going to be blocked because it's a sponsored ad results. But if you were setting up a pie hole for a friend or a grandparent who's not very tech savvy and doesn't know what links are safe to click on, this could be a feature, not a bug. To put this to the test, I went to a website that claims to give you free cryptocurrency just for the heck of it. And as you can see in red, it blocked a lot of ads. But as you can see in green, some ads still got through. Other ads you're still likely to see will be on the eBay or Amazon or other website homepages where it's just links within the website. So besides just not having to look at ads and making things generally safer to click on, Let's say that you're the sort of person who live streams once a week and shows on that stream news sites. It sure would be a shame if some scummy ad is what got your channel demonetized. As I was researching and putting this project together for myself, one of the authors of a post actually responded in the comments with an extra set of lists of blocked domains. By adding that list into your pie hole, what it would do is block more ads. The default configuration, as of a week ago, blocks about 9% of the traffic on my network, which translates to 112,000 domains being actively blocked. With these extra lists, however, the blocked percentage goes up to 15.5%, and over 1 million domains are being blocked. Because I only visit about a dozen websites personally, I decided to get a bunch of websites to try out from Level 1 Techs, since they reference a lot of different news sites, and news sites are generally a pretty good source of ads. So the first one I tried was Variety.com, and with the extra strict settings, the website itself did not even load. With it on the default pie hole settings, it did load the website, however, the ad on the right hand column did not load. Good job, pie hole. With no pie hole blocking at all, I got a full screen ad. Great. Loading up NBC News with no blacklist, the website is fine with just a couple ads in the right hand column. With the extra blacklist settings in place, we can see that the header gets a little distorted, but there are no ads on the sidebar. Loading up a CBS Los Angeles news article, we can see with no ad blocking, we've got ads at the top and on the side. And with the extra blacklist settings in place, 
that website just completely does not load correctly. Loading up one of the level one text news stories from the Indian Express, we can see that the ad in the right hand column is blocked on default settings. And if we were to go with the extra hardcore blocking settings, the website itself doesn't load. However, not all news sites are utterly dependent on ads. We can see that even with the extra strict settings, Eurogamer loads just fine with a blocked ad. The Verge loads just fine. And even VentureBeat loads just fine. And with all those extra strict settings in place too, we go from our free Dogecoin website looking like this to looking like this. No ads at all. So the ad-free future looks pretty bright. How hard is it to set up? Well, as long as you have a Raspberry Pi running Raspbian, you type in this one command into the terminal, you follow some very simple setup instructions, and that's basically it for setting it up on the Pi. Now to extend the benefits of Pi Hole to your entire network, what you need to do is go into your router's DHCP settings and assign a static, unchanging IP address to that Pi Hole. And then what you're going to do is go into your internet settings and manually specify the DNS server as the Raspberry Pi. With the Raspberry Pi as your DNS server, what it's going to do is block all the requests for known ad networks and then forward the requests that are okay onto an actual upstream DNS server. The reason you need that static unchanging IP address is so that when you tell your router to use a DNS server at a specific IP address that is the Raspberry Pi, every 24 hours when the IP addresses refresh, you don't end up losing that configuration and having no internet access at all. Hopefully you found this video super useful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. If you have extra lists of ad networks that I should be blocking, please leave those in the comments below for the benefit of everyone. As always, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.